Beautiful and Fuller House star Lori Loughlin and her husband, designer Massimo Giannulli, made headlines when they were charged in the largest college admission scam ever prosecuted by the U.S. Department of Justice. The celebrity couple was accused of shelling out half a million to help their daughters make the cut. Let's take a closer look at their real net worth and how much they stand to lose. Let's go get the bread. You got money. money. Good. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Lori Loughlin wasn't even supposed to be a regular on Full House, where she starred alongside the Olsen twins as Uncle Jesse's lady love. The starlet was originally contracted to only six episodes, but Aunt Becky soon became a fan favorite and producers loved the way she interacted with the Tanner girls. They ended up giving her a supporting role, where she became a mainstay and finished out the series in 1995. Loughlin's first big break was a Tap Cola commercial, and by the time she landed her role in Full House, she was already working in TV. The series helped make her a household name, and she's since landed some big roles, from the 90210 reboot to some G-rated basic cable cult hits. All this hard work helped her amass a pretty impressive $20 million, according to Celebrity Net Worth. Massimo Giannulli knows what it's like to get a helping hand from mom and dad. Though his parents didn't spend half a million dollars helping him cheat his way into USC, the alma mater he ditched before launching his namesake brand, he did supposedly receive a generous $100,000 loan from his father to start his clothing line, according to The Hollywood Reporter. And according to his daughter, Olivia Jade, the time he did spend in college was faked. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, sorry dad, but he wasn't <laughs> ever like enrolled in college, but he like faked his way through it and… Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, if the name Massimo sounds familiar, that's because you've probably seen it in every Target across America. Children of the early aughts might think of the brand as those affordable, not-so-trendy basics your mom picks up while browsing for snacks and school supplies. But at one point, Massimo was a streetwear brand with the same cool power as a modern-day Supreme. The clothing line was worth a whopping $275 million in 1996. What can we say? The 80s and 90s had a thing for neon-colored activewear. Today, Giannulli is worth about $80 million, according to Celebrity Net Worth. According to Variety, Lachlan and Giannulli live in a 12,000-square-foot mansion in one of Los Angeles' most star-studded neighborhoods. That was listed for $35 million in 2017. Basically, it's the pinnacle of luxury, which served those two well when they were both arrested. Lachlan reportedly used the property as collateral to post her $1 million bond. That wasn't the first time Lachlan and Giannulli benefited from their real estate purchases. The pair purchased a different Bel Air home in 2002 for around $8 million, which was renovated and sold in 2011 for $16.6 .6 million. In 2010, they purchased a $7.5 million Beverly Hills Tuscan-style villa. They renovated that house, too, and sold it for more than $18.2 million. Believe it or not, Fuller House was one of the most-watched TV series of 2016. It held up to both The Walking Dead and Sunday Night Football, which says a lot for a second incarnation of an old sitcom that doesn't even have the Olsen twins in it. Each episode reportedly pulled in 14.4 million viewers within 35 days of its Netflix premiere. It's unclear exactly how much Lachlan made from the Full House reboot, but it's probably enough to afford at least some of the rent on the Tanner's undeniably expensive San Francisco home. Lachlan's Fuller House salary hasn't been disclosed publicly, but co-star Jodie Sweetin's payday was revealed during a 2017 child support case. According to The Blast, the actress made a whopping $26,000 per week playing Stephanie Tanner. As a smaller character who only appears in 13 episodes, Lachlan's payday is likely far less than Sweeten's but still nothing to sneeze at. According to Business Insider, Full House had one of the most-watched series finales ever with a whopping 24.3 million viewers. With a fan base like that and the sheer amount of reruns, you'd think the stars would be making bank long after the series stopped airing new episodes. That's apparently not the case. In an interview with Pop Eater, series star Bob Saget revealed that he couldn't retire with his Full House money, and he apparently hardly makes anything on reruns. There's no Full House money. I didn't own the show. You get nothing. Residual checks on shows are nothing. They buy a cycle. Full House just started a new cycle, so someone, not me, is going to make a fortune. Whatever I get is found money. I hate talking about it. Nothing's what anybody thinks. If Danny Tanner isn't lining his pockets on reruns, imagine the pennies Lachlan must be earning from the show. Lachlan has a knack for turning small roles into something greater. Not only did she manage to make herself a regular with the Full House franchise for two separate series, but she also managed to transform an initially small role in the 2013 Hallmark Canadian Western drama When Calls the Heart into a years-long gig. In a 2017 interview with Today, Lachlan revealed that When Calls the Heart was originally a TV movie that was hoping to get picked up as a series. She signed on for just a single day of filming, but producers were hopeful that her name would help catapult the film into long-term success. And it now we're heading into we're season four is airing. Season four. It's looking good for season five. But, well, things are actually still looking good for the Hallmark series, which is now in its sixth season. But things aren't looking so good for Lachlan's role. According to Deadline, the show will continue without the actress following fallout from the scandal and her arrest. The show is temporarily on hiatus, as producers reportedly figure out what to do with the episodes they've already filmed. 
Lachlan's paycheck took a major hit following the news of her alleged involvement in the widely publicized college admission scam. We are constantly hit all day long with news. Just by picking up your phone, it's, you can, headlines pop up, and it's not always pleasant. Hallmark completely cut ties with the star, who had spent five years playing Abigail Stanton on When Calls the Heart. She also starred in some of the network's Christmas flicks and no less than 15 installments of the channel's Garage Sale Mystery movies. Following Lachlan's departure, the Garage Sale Mystery series was canceled. In addition to Hallmark giving Lachlan the boot, the actress will not appear in the fifth and final season of Fuller House. How would you like to see it all end? Oh my goodness, I actually wouldn't, I actually don't want to see it end. Yeah. <laughs> Though she may have already been written off the series before her legal drama, The Hollywood Reporter confirmed there were no plans to bring back Aunt Becky. In truth, it'd probably make for a pretty awkward Thanksgiving. Massimo Giannulli's clothing brand experienced an astronomical rise in spectacular fall. According to the Los Angeles Times, Giannulli's company grew from a garage operation in 1987 into a $72 million annual enterprise in eight years. The majority of that success came from casual menswear rather than higher-end designs. Massimo had grown to 300 employees and, in 1996, it went public on the New York Stock Exchange. At 32, Giannulli became the youngest chairman of a company listed on the NYSE. Unfortunately, all good things can't last. Just a year later, the company reportedly lost $18.7 million. Ever wonder how Massimo ended up going from runways to Target? The whole thing went down in the new millennium, an era where neon athletic wear fell out of favor for butterfly clips and Spice Girls-approved pleather. According to the Los Angeles Times, Junuli quote, signed over rights to his name, signature, voice, and personality in 2000 to help save his sinking company. The licensing deal actually worked, and the designer was expected to earn at least $8.5 million in royalties the first year. Giannulli's Target deal shocked longtime fans of Massimo because it positioned the brand away from the world of high fashion and made it a mainstay for busy families on a budget. The brand went from being advertised in GQ and Vanity Fair to slapping its name on area rugs and baby clothes. But Target believed it could rake in more than $300 million worth of sales with the brand's new image. The box store wasn't wrong. Massimo became one of the retailer's billion-dollar brands, but Target announced plans in 2017 to phase out the product line. A decade after Massimo's IPO, Giannulli sold this company for a reported $119 million in 2006 to Iconics Brand Group, which owns a variety of clothing and accessories companies, including Ed Hardy, Joe Boxer, and Candies. That price tag may not seem like a lot compared to Massimo's $275 million valuation in the 90s, but the brand was projected to pull in $20 to $25 million in royalties in 2007. In comparison, Massimo saw $32 million in sales in 1992, long before the Target licensing deal. In other words, while Target was still probably making a killing on the brand, Giannulli's cut was likely far less than when he was flying solo in his company's heyday. The same day Iconics announced its Massimo deal, it also agreed to buy Mud, you know, those jeans you see at Kohl's, for $88 million. This helped boost Massimo's outlook, and shares of the brand closed up 40% following news of the acquisition. As part of the deal, Giannulli joined Iconics as creative director for his namesake brand, so all in all, the whole thing sounded like a decent decision for Giannulli. Lachlan and Giannulli's collective $100 million net worth might mean nothing if they're forced to pay billions requested in a lawsuit filed in March 2019. Lachlan and Giannulli were sued alongside other parents in Operation Varsity Blues for no less than $500 billion. The multi-claim fraud class action suit was brought by Jennifer K. Toy, an angry mom who just so happens to be an award-winning former teacher. Toy claims her son, Joshua, had a 4.2 GPA, but didn't get into some of the colleges wrapped up in the admission scam even though he applied to them, unlike Lachlan's daughter, Olivia J. Clout is an actual word. <laughs> oh, I thought it was just like a social media thing. Once again, money on that education. <laughs> $500 billion is a lot of money to demand, considering Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, the richest man in modern history, only has $131 billion. Deadline reports that toy suit is, quote, unlikely to be the last such lawsuit to be filed in the coming week and months out of this sprawling conspiracy. So Lachlan and Giannulli had better prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars and scandals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.